a preview of what will happen in the next lecture. How about an equation like this? Tell me what will go wrong. This is a preview of resonance. So everybody take just a moment to think about this. Is this any different from anything we've seen before? And the answer is initial reaction is no. And then you notice one little caveat. Let's get there together. We know that the solution will have the form of a particular solution plus the null space. And in this case, let's start with the null space. Can you think you know what the quadratic equation will be? I wouldn't even write it down. So can you think of two numbers whose sum is 7 and product is 12? 3 and 4, right? OK, that's correct. That's the null space. It has nothing to do with the right-hand side. But now can you see the trouble brewing? The trouble brewing is that your natural guess for the right-hand side will be e to the 4t. You'll say, I'll guess e to the 4t, and, I'll, and then later I'll adjust the coefficient. What can go wrong? Well, what can go wrong is you'll know exactly what you'll get when you plug in e to the 4t. You will get 0, because e to the 4t is in the null space. So I'm using all these linear algebra words, but I don't really know the ax equals b analogy. When b is in the null space of a, how is that really such a special case? I'll have to think about it. Okay, but in this case, linear algebra helps even though the analogy is not immediate. You know that by virtue of e to the 4t being in the null space, that if you pursued our usual strategy of plugging it in and adjusting the coefficient later, you won't be able to do it because you will get 0. When you plug in e to the 4t, you will get 0, and you won't be able to adjust the coefficient to get 1. So you have to think of, an, of another particular solution, of another form for the particular solution. You have to make a different guess. That's right. But it's, once again, uh, not so much important what that guess is. It's the recognition that you'll have to make another guess. And another part that's interesting is the fact that this describes resonance, which is one of the most important phenomena in the natural world, without which nothing will work. Uh, in particular, you won't be able to hear, because your hearing is based entirely on resonance. And our antennas work, work on resonance. So there are a couple of terms that I did not define. So in the equation, uh, x double prime plus k over m x equals 0. Do you remember this? What ended up inside the sine and cosine is the square root of this. So the square root, uh, let's call it omega. The square root of k over m is the frequency, right? Because that's what goes into sines and cosines as a coefficient that multiplies t. That's the frequency at which the spring with the mass wants to oscillate. You might be driving it at a different frequency, and that will be reflected into the solution. That goes into the particular solution. But the frequency with the that the body naturally wants to oscillate as, at, is this, square root of k over m. This is called the natural frequency of the body. This is the purest example of a natural frequency. All bodies that oscillate, and mostly all bodies do, have a natural frequency. In music, the natural frequency of, a, of a, the string is called its pitch. That's a different word for natural frequency. No matter how you hit the string, the timbre will change, but the pitch of the string won't. The pitch of the note will be the same because no matter what you do, no matter how you set it in motion, that's the frequency it wants to oscillate at. So that's called the natural frequency. And here, you can call this, even though this is not a sine or a cosine, but as you know, exponentials and sines and cosines are related, I would call this the frequency of the drive. 
right? This describes the system itself. This describes the drive. And if the frequency of the drive matches the natural frequency of the body, that's when resonance occurs. That's why when you scream, sing at a glass trying to break it, it will only break at a particular frequency. Your voice needs to match the natural or one of the natural frequencies of the glass. So you have you drive it with your voice and, and it will only shatter if your voice matches the natural frequency of the glass. So the, the frequency of the drive needs to match the frequency of the glass. In spite of what you think, Monsieur Lobis, there are some professions where practice does make perfect. What in hell was that? B flat. That's, that's the hallmark cause of resonance. That's next time.